Hey guys, it's Mr. Schmidt here, and in this video, we're going to talk about labor demand. So now that we understand the characteristics of a perfectly competitive labor market, we want to start building out the model of that market. And we're going to focus here in this video on the demand side of that equation. So labor demand is the quantities of workers that firms are willing and able to hire at different wage rates. And the key here is noticing that in labor demand, it's actually the firms that are doing the purchasing here, right? In the traditional product market, it was the consumers uh, doing the purchasing. But here it's the firms, right? The firms are the ones that are hiring the workers. They're purchasing their labor. And therefore, firms are responsible for labor demand. So you kind of have to switch your brain with this because you've been taught up to this point, okay, if it's a firm, it's supply. If it's a firm, it's supply. But with labor demand, it is the firms that are doing the purchasing because they are buying the labor. Now, with that in mind, how might we draw a labor demand curve? Well, let's start with the labels on each axis. On the x-axis, it's going to look very familiar to the product market because we are going to use the letter Q to represent quantities of labor. I've seen um, on some graphs, uh, examples, all floating around the internet and whatnot, some teachers use L, a capital L, instead of Q. Either one would be acceptable on the AP exam, so I would not lose sleep over it. I just use Q because I think it's easier to remember because you've been using Q for literally every other graph we've done almost, so this works as well. And then for the y-axis, we can't really use P for price because we associate that with the price of a product. Here we need the price of the resource, in this case, labor. And that can be represented by the wage, which we'll use a W to represent wage. Okay, So wage on the y-axis, quantity of labor on the x-axis. So in that case, how would we draw the labor demand curve? What would it look like? Well, if we think about this, if I'm a firm, I want to pay the lowest wage possible to my workers. If I can pay a lower wage, I'll hire more workers. And so the labor demand curve, unsurprisingly, is going to look like a lot of the demand curves we've drawn, downward sloping. Okay, So this is the labor demand curve. At a higher wage, firms are willing and able to demand fewer workers, less quantities of labor. At a lower wage, they're willing and able to purchase higher quantities of labor. Of course, the labor demand curve can shift, just like a lot of demand curves. And so the question now is, what would cause the labor demand curve to shift? What are the factors that would uh, make that happen? And in order to think about this, I want to introduce to you a very important concept in this unit that relates to labor demand, and it's called derived demand. Derived demand is the idea that the demand for a resource is determined by the demand for the product. In other words, if I'm a business and I have this awesome product that people just love and they're buying it all over the place, right? then I know that I'm going to need a lot more of my resources to make the product to sell to people. And so I want to buy more resources. I need to get more land. I need to, to build the factories to make the product. I need to get more workers to run the assembly lines. I need uh, more tools to put in the hands of the workers to make the product, right? All of those are resources that have a greater demand because more people, more consumers are wanting to buy the product. That's the idea of derived demand, and it, it in of itself represents one of the shifters of labor demand. Let me show you with this table I have here of what shifts the labor demand curve to the left and to the right. So for a left shift, the first thing we have here is a decrease in the product price. If I'm getting a lower price for my product, that probably means that the product demand curve shifted left. And so because it shifted left, like if we were to draw a traditional uh, supply and demand graph here, right? If we shifted demand to the left, 
price would fall, right? And so because I'm getting a lower price for my product, according to the principle of derived demand, that means less demand for resources, including labor. And so the demand curve for labor would shift to the left. Of course, the right shift would be the opposite. If I'm getting a higher price for my product due to, say, an increase in demand for the product, then I'm going to want to demand more resources. I need more resources to make this suddenly popular product. And so the demand curve would shift to the right. Second is worker productivity. If my workers aren't very productive, if they're sleeping on the job, they're not showing up, they're damaging the product, whatever the case may be, they're not meeting the quota, there's a decrease in worker productivity, that's going to shift labor demand to the left. Whereas if my workers are really productive, right? Like an example that I'm thinking of uh, is in the movie Elf. If you've seen the movie Elf, there's a scene in the, the beginning of the movie where a bunch of the elves are working really, really hard. and They're, they're making toys left and right. Um, and uh, the tidal elf, you know, the, the human elf, the adult elf, very big elf, uh, is making very, very few toys and not meeting his quota, right? But he's not meeting his quota. And so he um, probably would want Santa to shift that labor demand curve to the left uh, because he's not doing a very good job, right? But all those other elves may be convincing Santa to hire more elves and shift the labor demand curve for elves to the right. So there's an example for you. The last two you don't see that often on the um, AP exam, but I do want to mention them here with substitutes and complements. Um, we've dealt with subs and comps before in the course. Um, and so how do they work here with labor? So with a left shift with a substitute resource, if there's a decrease in the price of a substitute resource, that shifts labor demand left. So as an example, if a company builds a robot that can do the job better than the worker, and so the robots, maybe the robots become cheaper to build and purchase, I need less workers because I now have these cheaper robots that can do the job, right? So labor demand would shift to the left. Whereas if those robots become so expensive, I can't afford them, it's just easier and cheaper to hire some workers, I'll go with the workers, and the demand for labor would increase. With complements, it's, it's two things that go together, right? So if hammers that the workers would use would become cheaper, then maybe I'll hire more workers to use those hammers. But if the hammers are more expensive, maybe I don't hire as many workers who specialize in the hammering part of building the product, whatever that is, right? I'm sure you could probably think of better examples than that one. Um, but that's the idea of complementary resources. It's two resources that you use together. Substitute resources, you pick one or the other, right? Subs is or, complements is and. So that would be the idea there. I would say these first two are probably the ones that you're gonna see the most on an AP question. But occasionally you do get one about substitutes or complements. So that's all for this video on the labor demand curve. Until next time, have a great day.